If you remove a chair leg from under a chair, that chair collapses. And if you remove a single organism from a food web, well, that food web can be in serious danger. I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking to you about how to analyze these food webs. I want to start over here with the producers, first of all, and talk to you first about what these words mean, because they're going to occur very frequently. We've got the producers produce their own food. They're the plants. Okay, so they use the sun to produce their own food. And then the primary consumers, they're primary, they're first. They eat the plants. They're the herbivores. And then above them, you've got three levels of carnivores. You've got the secondary consumers, tertiary, and the quaternary. The tertiaries eat the secondary the quaternaries eat the tertiaries. So that's how this sort of thing works. And the secondaries, of course, eat the primaries. So these are kind of like carnivores. They are carnivores, and they're just kind of in different categories based on what they eat. Now remember those words because they're going to come up right now. First, we're going to use simple terms like herbivores. These are the plant eaters, so you can see them, you know, really clearly there. All of these eat plants. Now we're going to move on to the omnivores, and they eat plants and animals. There's none of them that do that in this one. Then we're going to go carnivores. Anything that eats up an animal, and insects are called animals in this case here, so anything that eats an insect or an animal is a carnivore. So all of these eat other animals. Now look at this herbivorous insect, and look at this predation. They're both insects, but one eats plants and one eats animals, so that's kind of the difference there. So there's seven of them. Top carnivores, they're pretty easy to find. There's, they're on top, nothing eats them. So there's three. And uh, the toads are connected. Uh, let's see, how many food chains are the toads part of? Uh, just that one there. None other but that one. So look at this. What does the toad eat? Predaceous insects. So if I was to kill every predaceous insect in this environment, would the toad have any food? No. But you know what? You're going to learn in a second, in a few minutes, how you can kill these predaceous insects without, without even touching them. That's where this food web gets really interesting and really scary. The mice, let's see what food webs there or food chains they're connected to. There's one here. There's one you can go this way. One you can go that way. So there's three. But let's take a look at the spiders. So you can go through the spider, uh, up into the spider from the herbivorous insect. So this one pathway. You can go up through the herbivorous insect this way up again through the herbivorous that way but you can also go through the predaceous insect through the spider and again through this way and through this way so these green ones are through the predaceous one and this one is through the herbivorous one so there's six pathways and then we've got the fox and the fox is connected in many many ways look at this one way through the squirrel through the mouse through the bird through the herbivorous insect through the herbivorous insect and the bird and the fox through the predaceous insect and the spider and the bird and the fox, and again through this way. So you can count them. There's eight of them. Now, I know we did this already. Primary consumers are the herbivores. We'll just go through them again. I'm just showing you that the words mean the same thing. But now we're going to go differently. We're not going to say carnivores. We're going to say secondary consumers. Remember, the secondaries eat the primaries and the primaries eat the plants. So if we have a plant here, Look, here's a, here's a secondary, here's a secondary, 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 secondary. All of these eat primaries. Let's try to prove a couple of them. Say we pick the owl. The owl is a secondary because he eats a rabbit, which is a primary because he eats a plant. Right, so you got plant, primary, secondary. You can also have um, this bird is a secondary because look, plant, primary, secondary so this bird is a secondary and this guy here same example plant primary secondary so they're all secondaries so let's take a look now at um, the tertiaries can you find any tertiaries what are they again oh yeah they eat the secondaries which eat the primaries which eats the plants so let's see oh wait a minute what's what's going on here we already picked those why are they coming up again well because you can be more than one you could be under more than one trophic level. We just said that the owl is a secondary. Remember, we just proved that the owl in the last example was a secondary. Well, let's prove that he's a tertiary. Let's see this. Here's a plant. Primary. Secondary. Okay, that proves he's a secondary. But what about this pathway? P plants. Primary. Secondary. Go up into the owl. Tertiary. So you see now, we just proved the owl is two things in the same environment. 
You can do the same thing with the snakes and all these other ones. You can prove that they're all tertiaries. Look at the fox. If you go through the rabbit, you got plants, primary, secondary. But if you go through the um, through the bird, let's go plant, primary, secondary, tertiary. Okay, so you can be more than one. That's pretty cool. Actually, that gets scary. That's a scary thing that you can be more than one. I'll show you why in a sec. How many quaternaries are there? Oh, come on. You got to be kidding me. The same ones almost? Yes. Look, here's the owl. Plant, primary, secondary. But if you go this way, you got plant, primary, secondary, tertiary. But look at this. What if I went plant, primary, go this way now, secondary, tertiary, up into the owl quaternary. That owl is a secondary and a tertiary and a quaternary and so are all these other ones. I'm going to let you try to prove that on your own using the same logic. So all this is saying is you can be more than one in the same environment. You can fit under more than one trophic level in the same in food web. I'm going to skip this here because I want to move on to bigger, better things. But it's going over the same concept. I'm going to rip right through it. Now let's talk about extinctions now. Every plant here vanishes. What happens? Well, look, all of this here starves. All of this starves and this starves. So everything above it will starve too because their food source is now gone as well. But you may say, okay, well, no problem. The fox doesn't have to eat. He can just stick to these insectivorous birds. There's no problem. He'll be bored. You know, just one thing in his diet, but at least he won't die. Not so fast. Yeah, a lot of you are like, no, watch these birds eat these and these will die. And so everything, everything collapses above. That's essentially what's happening. All because you remove the plants. And it doesn't seem like a major thing, but everything gets impacted because you took out plants. So you, what you end up with is mass extinctions. And here's some notes to go along with it. You can pause the video and write it down or just kind of move on. What about the rabbits? Look what happens if the rabbits go extinct. The foxes, which normally eat rabbits and squirrels and mice and birds, well, now they have one less thing on their menu. And so they're going to get a little bit hungrier, so they're going to eat more squirrels. Right. They're also going to eat more mice and more birds, but squirrels, let's focus on one thing. They're going to eat more squirrels. There's going to be less squirrels going around. Right. So since there's less squirrels, Hmm. The grass and the plants have a chance to grow more because the mice population will also go down. Foxy's hungry. He's going to make up his diet with more of everything. So now plants are celebrating. They're like, yes, we can start growing more. You're going to overpopulate the plants. And that's what's going to happen here. And here's again some notes. Focusing again just on the squirrels. But it's also true for these other ones as well. Now these owls, let's pretend they go extinct. Look what happens. These two get affected. You know why? Because the hawks are gone. So now the squirrels overpopulate. Yeah, the squirrels overpopulate means less plants. The mice will also overpopulate because there's less owls eating them and the birds will overpopulate for the same reason. You're going to have lots more plants growing overpopulation. Uh, sorry, not over, underpopulation. The plants are going to start disappearing. All of these are eating them. So you know what then? Over time, this will sort of uh, kind of repair itself because the fox is going to be like, all right, more food, let's make more babies. They're going to start overpopping, but that takes time. Fox babies take a while to start, you know, giving birth and all that stuff. But the grass and these, these here, they populate really quickly. So that's what's going to happen. You're going to have some serious problems if the plant population goes down because now everything on this side gets affected too because there's less plants because these are eating them. Very, very complex system going on here. You can read these again. Pause the video and read it. I'm going to move on. Here's the scary one. Watch this. Remember what I said? Actually, I won't even bring that up yet. I'm going to say if these disappear, what happens? Well, the spiders are going to have freedom. They're going to be like, freedom! And they're going to start overpopulating. 
but take a look at what spiders eat. Yeah. So what's going to happen? You're going to have so many spiders and they're going to all attack these predaceous insects. Yeah, they're going to eat herbivorous ones, but they're going to eat these as well. Who suffers? Right. What else does the toad eat? Nothing. Toad is sad. Toad is really sad because all of these spiders are eating his food. These are going to go extinct. Toad's going to die out too. So you've removed him because you've been so irresponsible with the environment that they've all vanished. But now the spiders are taking over. They eat all of these. Toad now goes extinct too. One extinction, two extinctions, three extinctions because of some silly environmental policies that are not protecting our wildlife. Very, very scary situation. Now, I hope that kind of uh, brings it home to you. I hope that you, you felt something there, that our environment, our, our networking, you know, the food web network, it's such a sensitive, delicate balance in our environment. And the moment you start playing around with it and start shooting animals because, you know, they're over, you start messing around with everything. You're kind of irresponsible with the environment. One animal, you know, has no more home to live in. It goes extinct. Everything else gets affected. Ladies and gentlemen, take care of yourself. Take care of the environment. I love you all, and I'll see you next time.